Welcome to the TOS machine translation and Moses tutorial. Research on machine translation has revealed that quality evaluation is one of the most challenging and subjective tasks. In this module, we give a brief overview of strategies of human evaluation of machine translation quality. Human-driven methods of machine translation evaluation require a certain degree of human intervention in order to obtain a quality score. Manual evaluation is performed by human judges, uh, which are instructed to estimate the performance of a system based on a sample of its output. For the most part, and thanks to their linguistic competence, bilingual language users are able to perform an intuitive evaluation on the quality of machine translation system output and can be considered the reference for a number of language processing tasks. However, there is also considerable variation across the ratings for a number of reasons, such as tasks and domain independence, an evaluator's level of awareness of linguistic knowledge, individual uh, preferences, such as whether the evaluator weighs content or grammar highest, or dynamic learning uh, from evaluation, like evaluating different types of errors would allow one to distinguish among systems that perform more or less the same. Because of these reasons, the automatic evaluation is sometimes referred to as an objective evaluation, while the human kind appears to be more subjective. There are four popular strategies of human evaluation that I am going to present in this module. First one is based on adequacy and fluency estimation. Accuracy and fluency are widespread means of manual evaluation. Usually, these measures of generated translation are evaluated according to a 1 to 5 quality scale. Fluency indicates how natural the translation sounds to a native speaker of the target language. Adequacy is assessed after the fluency judgment is done and the evaluator is presented with a certain reference translation and must judge how much of the information from the original translation is expressed in the translation by selecting one of the proposed grades. For the example that you can see on the screen, three machine translation systems generate three different outputs. Empty output 1 is fluent, but doesn't convey the whole meaning of the sentence. Machine translation system 2 generated tra uh, generate translation that is neither fluent, verb is missing, nor adequate, the meaning is distorted. The output of the third machine translation system is fluent and adequate. As you may notice, the output of this machine translation system is very different from the reference translation that would probably assign, to, uh, assign a low blue score to this segment. This type of evaluation can be considered a light form of error analysis. A more profound form of this mean of evaluation is error classification that we will consider in upcoming slides. Another approach that has been gaining popularity in industry and academia is the ranking of, se of sentences. This is a quick and easy way to compare the output of different engines at the same time. Annotators have to rank the same output sentences from best to worst relatively to the other choices, with ties usually allowed. The research has shown that this approach yields greater agreement among annotators than adequacy fluency. On the negative side, uh, rankings doesn't provide any information about the translation for further analysis. The third approach is based on the comparison of post-editing and translation efforts. This approach implies measuring of the productivity increase of machine translation post-editing as compared to traditional translation in the following way. The post-editors are asked to translate sentences from scratch and post-edit the raw machine translation output. The evaluation system captures time, keystrokes, edit distance and possibly some other parameters to compare the results of translation and post-editing. Post-editing evaluation techniques are costly and are not usually used to evaluate uh, minor system improvements. The fourth strategy is one-to-one -one comparison of machine translation systems, which is sometimes considered a sub-technique of ranking. Evaluators are asked to choose the best translation for two or more machine translation outputs. A general recommendation is not to provide evaluators with more than three systems at a time for fair comparison. A final decision is taken on the basis of aggregated scores. This strategy is widely used for fast and raw estimation of machine translation quality. 
DAOs members should know that all four human evaluation strategies are outlined up to now. Adequacy fluency, ranking, one-to-one -one comparison, and machine translation post-editing, as well as more detailed error typology analysis are available to you, DAOs members, as part of the suite of DAOs dynamic quality framework shared tools for machine translation evaluation. The fifth strategy refers to the measure of human targeted variants of automatic metrics such as age blue, age meteor, or age tour. These measures are rooted in the paradigm of semi automatic evaluation metrics for interactive machine translation. Evaluators are asked to manually post edit the reference with information from the test hypothesis translations so that differences between a translation and a reference account only for errors. In this case, the final score is not influenced by the effects of synonymy. In general, a human-targeted matrix is a time-consuming way of machine translation quality evaluation, but they are considered more reliable than classical versions of automatic metrics. While there is a large variety of both human-driven and automatic evaluation measures, the interpretation of these measures is not always clear and the identification of the most prominent source of errors in a given system using these measures alone is not possible. One of the methodologies to overcome this weakness is a reference-based error classification. It aims to identify the main problems with generated translation and indicating the fields uh, that the research effort should be focused on. A framework for classification of the machine translation errors describes 15 error types covered by five categories missing words, word order errors, incorrectly translated words, unknown words, and punctuation errors. If using machine translation as a translator productivity tool, the main question that industrial machine translation users ask is whether post editing machine translation output is cost effective for a specific machine translation system and client or domain. Understanding of the particular machine translation setup and the way how MT is integrated into the localization workflow is very important for evaluation since wrong information can seriously distort the results of assessment. A list of recommendations for highly meticulous quality evaluation might include the following steps. First, creation of a segment level quality profile using automatic metrics that, depending on the particular translation process, can be considered error estimation of machine translation quality. Second, productivity testing according to certain quality criteria to measure translation cost and time with post -mach uh, machine translation post editing and comparison with a baseline of not using MT at all. Third, to use the client translation memories as much as possible, since they are likely the best source of in domain information. As I have already mentioned, DAO's dynamic quality framework shared tools provide a neutral and independent place to undertake human evaluation. Please refer to a separate demo from Moses tutorial titled DAO's dynamic quality evaluation framework for more details about the DQF tool. We have reached the end of this module describing the methods of evaluating machine translation systems. For other modules in the series, please go to the web address shown on the slide. Thank you for your attention.